Mm-hmm. You secured the job with the WWE. That's like got to be a childhood dream, dude. Big time. Yeah, like, I mean, I've been watching wrestling since I was five. That's why they're awake. What does that mean? The crickets are taking the myth. They're awake. They're whopping all day. Those are myth crickets. Yeah, I think so. Punches dangly. We're gonna punch his dangly. Gonna punch his dangly. Gonna punch his dangly. Hey y'all, go see Jeremiah Watkins on tour doing stand-up comedy in Winnipeg, New York City, Los Angeles, California, Huntington Beach, Sunnyvale, California, and more dates added at JeremiahWatkins.com. Now let's get into this episode with his pal Johnny LaQuasto on Jeremiah Wonders. What do you got there? I appreciate you have a syringe that matches my shirt. Oh, well, yeah. guess what? That blows up balloons. Is it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it does. I thought this was a performance-enhancing show and that you were trying to... <laughs> you thought I was going to juice you up? Look, I, I'm willing. <laughs> you know? I need... I'm at the age now where, hey, you got something? I'll try it. Yeah? Yeah, why not? You a rhino guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a goddamn rhinoceros. You a hippopotamus? Uh, well, you know, hippopotamuses, they kill more people than any other uh, animal in the kingdom. And that's not a lie. That's a real thing, and yep. a lot of people don't know that. Yep. Hippopotamus, they, they are very underrated in the murder uh, wildlife game. Yeah, a lot of people sleeping on hippopotamuses. I don't they know think, why. They think they're just hungry, hungry hippos. That yeah. board game changed <laughs> the dynamic how people view those all together. You know the hippos are just out there chomping on balls. And that's oh, it. dude, taking them out Oof. immediately. Very constipating diet. So I guess they are hungry in a yeah. different way. They're hungry. They're pissed off because they've been misrepresented in the media. It's true. So they take it out on us. That happens. Facts. That happens. Open your eyes, people. When, when was the last time you played Candyland? Oh, man, about three weeks ago. No, uh, <laughs> it's been a while, but every time I see it in a Target, I go, I should, I should get that Candyland. Like I talked, I go, hey, I used to play this when I was a kid, and they're like, yeah, we, you told us seventeen times. I'm like, okay, cool. Shoots and ladders, another awesome game. Big one. Those were my two big ones when I was about four, five, six. Would you get pissed over Monopoly? You competitive? I no, I was never. I didn't have the. I, I couldn't play. It took too long. It took too long. I could play Monopoly. Yeah, you, you have to have a, a a lot of people to play with. Yeah. Otherwise, a one on one game will go forever. Or you play by yourself. You own everything. Uh, just the sad old man in Central Park who plays Monopoly by himself instead of chess. Yeah, you're Bruce Wayne. You own everything. I guess so. Why not? You're playing against yourself. I always play against myself in pool. I always lose. Yeah? Always. Eight ball, corner pocket. Yeah. When it's not supposed to be in the corner pocket. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm i like, oh, when I, when I play pool by myself, I'm like, Okay, I'm solid to this game no matter what. And then like I'll get that and then I'm like, ah, I lost again. Son of a bitch. Son of a I am not a shark. Do you play any uh table games? Ping pong, anything like that? I'm a big ping pong guy. Yeah? Yeah. You love have a ping me. pong look about you. Uh, thank you. That you'd be Is it good because at it? there's green on my shirt that hey, used man, to be fully white? I wasn't going to call it out, but on the way here, Johnny might have spit a little juicy poo on his white shirt. I was drinking green juice because I care about my health before I'm coming to hang out with you. I want to make sure I'm at my top performance. And I spilled some green juice uh, right around the nipple, just beneath the breast area. And uh, I tried my best to wash it while driving. Uh, didn't work out. What a sign of an adult drinking green juice. Mm-hmm. You know, mixed it up real strong. Oh yeah, are you, are you, you're not sponsored by Athletic Greens or anything, right? No. Okay, because I don't want to give free ad space away. I was not drinking Athletic Greens. I was drinking a cheaper version because I'm thrifty. But I started cussing like an angry dad when I realized my shirt. I've done that. Yeah. I, I I told you before the show. I I was doing a taping recently and I bit into a slice of pizza and grease shot all over my shirt in the middle of it. Is it because you folded the, the slice? I think so. I think I went like this a little bit. You know, the kind of it was New York style. It was Joe's Pizza. Shout out Joe's. They've sponsored this podcast. Okay. So we can give some love to Joe's. Joe, lower on the grease. Though. Joe's a good dude. Mm-hmm. He's a good dude. But I bit into his slice of pizza and it just, it just total shot straight to the chest. I was like, oh, daddy. And, and was it was like, super hot grease too. Yeah. 
And did you notice it and like when it happened or did you look down you're like, "Oh man." No, I was too busy in in ecstasy just sucking down a slice of like, "Oh, yeah. so good." I've done such a good job hosting this show. I deserve this. Slice. Dude, mid show. Yeah, that's what I was doing. And then I had to go back on to the end and I'm like, "Frick, what am I doing?" Now, where was the was it right around my stain or was it a little bit higher? It was right around there. It was like like dead center. Yeah, that's rough. You can't really get away from that. No, no. No. Yeah. That's where you go up like Napoleon. Uh-huh. Just like <laughs> like an old painting. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you really enjoyed yourself tonight, everyone. <laughs> I'm now going to take a bow. What is he? He's acting so formal at the end, but he's in a T-shirt. What's going on? There's no sleeves. He's just holding it underneath his armpit. While we're here, let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. What if comedy shows ended with the Pledge of Allegiance? I think that would send everyone I home. think the right kind of shows end in the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Because there are so many things that need to be changed in the world of comedy. All right? Okay. Uh, number one, we need more cancellations. Yeah. All right? Less comedians. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think yeah. the cancellations need to outweigh the comedians. Cancel everybody. Mm-hmm. All right? You tell a joke that's a little bit of sarcastic, mm-hmm. you're gone. Yeah, I um I like my comedy to be right down the middle. I don't like misdirections, okay? Oh, yes, of course. So I, don't try to surprise no. me with your comedy. I want to know where the punchline's coming. Well, look, I, let me apologize for uh, not being direct with you uh-huh. uh, prior to your uh, comment. Okay, well, thank um, you. I want to let you know first, before you say that comment, I'd like you to say it one more time. I'm letting you know that I'm open to what you're about to say to me. So what you say will be uh, immersed into my... Well, whatever you're saying, I'm receptive to hearing. Yes. So continue. Okay. So your your opinion on on comedy, you don't enjoy misdirection. Uh, continue. What is the your favorite aspect of the genre? My favorite aspect of the genre is when I hear a joke and I go, "That was funny." Mm. I don't like to laugh out loud. No. But I like to go, "That's funny." Hmm. Right. Because hmm. you know what. Laughing creates wrinkle lines. It does. And I don't like that. Not to mention, the heart rate goes up. Mm. Not good for eating. It can be unhealthy. Yes, Mm -hmm. it can be. So I laugh at everything like... Now, I don't know about you. When when I'm watching a comedy show, I like to audibly give my opinion and views in between the jokes of the clown on stage. I think that the comedian deserves to hear it in real time like a Yelp review. Yes, real time Otherwise, they don't know how they're doing in the room. Right. Constructive criticism the double c Mm -hmm. that's my favorite thing to do and i've been called a c before oh which one you know oh it's my favorite word is it Mm -hmm. are you from australia (laughs) 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 now that's the kind of comedy i like yes thinking comedy (laughs) exactly brain comedy yeah head comedy if you're gonna hump the stool at least say something whimsical while yeah at least say an equation while you do it yeah division multiplication (laughs) <laughs> while you're humping said stool. Yeah. 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 And entertain me. That's how I feel. I mean, look, I don't care what other kind of mongrels are in the audience who mm. who want to hear loud noises, who, mm. who want to hear punchlines. I'm not here for punchlines. No. No. And if I don't like what you say, yes, I'm going to go on social media and voice my display. You know what I what special I hated recently? Because oh there God. were so many punchlines and there were so many people laughing out oh, loud. I'm going to hate watch it. There's this comedian named Johnny LaQuasto oh, and he's got this no. special called Saudi Stepdad. No, first, how dare he be a white man Yeah, and call his special Saudi Stepdad? It was honestly disgusting how much people were laughing at the punchlines. I am appalled. Yeah. I mean, ju- the fact that he is uh, he is in love with a woman uh, who is not from the same country. Gross. And who has become a father to three children. Yuck. How dare he yeah. promote such, oh, what's the word? Violence. Violence <laughs> and family. Yeah. Family violence. Uh, but you have a special out called... Saudi stepdad. Um, oh, thanks what for What those girls yes, were uh, talking about that they really didn't like because it was really funny. It's, uh, it's I, weird. Look, it's subjective. I mean, right. What is funny? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But it was, it, uh, it was funny. I was in the live chat during the premiere of your special, and I was seeing a lot of Arabic text that was floating through the chat. Which obviously would be a little bit of a, a surprise to someone like yourself. We, yeah. We've been friends for years, but yeah. we... I haven't seen each other in quite some time. Uh-huh. And our lives have changed. Uh-huh. Last time I saw you, you didn't have two children. Yeah, I know. You didn't have a wife. Yeah. 
So, hey, you know. Yeah, no, I was legit like, like, is there something about Johnny that he's never told me before? I, I am a, I'm, I'm a prince. Okay. But that's a sidebar. Have you been sending me emails? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, the thing is, the emails I've been sending, they've, uh, I know you've, I know you've had certain insecurities over the years, and so the emails I've been sending you, um, they're they're to help you grow. Sure. In certain aspects. Yeah. Or shrink. Yes. Yes. Well, we're both. Look, I have not found that uh, <laughs> that solution either. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Don't you wish that noses were like penises in the way that when it was cold outside, oh <laughs> that it retracted just a little I, bit. I was gonna say, you and I, we have you ever had a sword fight with your nose? I feel like. If any two people could do it, no, we could just on guard. Back the and forth. Uh, I did. I went nose to nose for a picture with Ari Shafir, oh and boy. it shocked people how big the noses were in profile, like touching Who each other. Who do you think had the bigger girth of the nose? I think technically, I have the bigger nose wow. out of me and Ari, That's but his is like it's Jewish. just a different shape. It's, it's more Jewish. Jewish. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Is, his is really authentic, right? Yours is a little bit of Watkins. What is it's mysterious? It's uh, mysterious. Yeah, nose. what else? Is it what, what, oh what, what the can? Where did that nose come from? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks like a potato. I get that literally so often. Mm. People trying to to place heritage, and I'm like, it's exactly it's just white. It's just yeah. very European and white. Well, well, question. I mean, what about your parents? What are their noses like? My dad has a decent sized nose, but it's like it doesn't go this way as much. Oh. It, this is more just like kind of like like bulbous, if that mm. makes sense. To my next point, what about the mailman's nose? Big. Okay. Well, the family has something to work out, I guess. You talk about this in your special. You've got uh, basically you are the stepdad in a Saudi-based family. Yes. And uh, let's talk about that because that's very interesting as a white man I'm like leading, yourself. I'm leading an Arabic household. Yeah. Can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, dude life life you don't know what life is gonna throw at you like you know before the pandemic i was working for wwe as a broadcaster and the pandemic happened i meet the most amazing woman ever and next thing you know here i am i got a family and, yeah and we're living life baby yeah i'm learning arabic one word at a time how now when you secured that job uh, like like you've done a lot of different announcing jobs like over the years and stuff like that when mm -hmm. you secured the job with the wwe that's like got to be a childhood dream dude big time yeah like i mean i've been watching wrestling since i was five and it it was i never thought it would be a possibility and you know i'm working in wrestling for years just having fun like loving it trying to be as good as i could be never thought that opportunity would happen and then all of a sudden it did and they're like can you move to florida i was like i'll move tomorrow and so i did yeah and dude it was crazy like uh, what was it uh, December thirtieth, twenty nineteen? We did a. They put me on a small tour. We did Staples Center, so like, I I had the mic in front of thirteen thousand people at Staples Center. I'm like, this is bananas. Yeah. And so yeah, what a, what a interesting company to work for. That's for sure. Yeah, dude, that's so wild. I almost want to to hear a little bit of uh, <laughs> huh. of an of announcing. Yeah, you know, it's rare that I have like a professional announcer. Okay. In the Wait, mix. Are you talking like, do you want to do a ring announcement? Like, you're, like you're walking down to the ring, or do you want like play by play, like you're actually in a match of some type? Or uh, a fight? Maybe I'm walking down uh, towards the ring. And, okay. And you're commentating on on like the antics and the theatrics that are happening around me. Got it. So you are essentially making your entrance. Uh, do Do you have a wrestling name you always pictured yourself having? Because uh, I know you've played a lot of uh, scenarios out you know, yeah. over the course of your career and your life. I yeah. Mean, multifaceted individual. Uh huh. Besides your nose, a lot of things going on. Right. So, is there any what what else is there to Jeremiah Watkins that I could bring to your entrance as you make your way to the ring? Um, may I mean I think it would, it could be something. Um, what it. What if it's something like it's usually an animal is a good is a good take. Sure. It could be like a, the condor or something like that. Oh, okay. You know, something something Condors or, are pretty they're aggressive animals. I'd right? be afraid if I saw one. Yeah. Are they extinct? They're I around. Think so. They're around. Okay. Are they? I don't know. They sound <laughs> like a dinosaur. 
I'm I not, mean, a little bit. I'm no aviary person. I don't know. Maybe the, okay. So maybe pterodactyl. I think pterodactyl is pretty clear, right? Like they're I've seen them. You've they're, seen what their facial structures yeah, look yeah. like. Yeah, of course. Nobody's confusing that. No, I mean, you drive deep enough in the valley, you'll see a goddamn. Okay, maybe I'm the human pterodactyl. I like that. Because you a, have a good wingspan. I do. I. I, Very. I mean. I mean. You can't even see it on screen. But yes. Yeah. You you just touch both walls. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm pleasuring two women at the same time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and they're very they have ball gags in, but they're they're enjoying yeah, it. They're having a good time. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the human pterodactyl is entering from the bowels of the Staples Center. The bowels of the Staples Center. I do like that. Um, that's a that's a deep rise for sure. Mm -hmm. Those but those bowels do run deep. Now it's the Crypto.com Arena. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Crypto.com. It does not. Overtaken our favorite place to get paper Ooh, clips. It doesn't have the same rule of the tongue. No, it doesn't. Especially the fact that, isn't everyone afraid of crypto now? I don't know what's going on with that I shit. was just in Detroit, and they have the Little Caesars Arena. Which is crazy that they have that much money off of Hot and Ready's. Dude, it just goes to show you. It's all about believing in what you love, guys. Yeah. And that's a message for me and Johnny here today. If you believe in your product that much right. and you keep putting it out there, it doesn't matter if people crap on it. No. And it doesn't matter if some people think it's horrible. Mm -hmm. If you believe in it, yeah. you can make money at your dreams. And what's the phrase? Quantity over quality. That's what that, life is all about. I mean, I think that that's what Little Caesar should say yes. instead of, you know, pizza, pizza. 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 Sure. It should say quantity, quantity. Mm -hmm. Quant <laughs> too much, too much. <laughs> too much, too much. <laughs> Five dollar pizzas and you buy arenas. Yeah. What is going on? It's a little insane. Now, I don't know what your age is. When I was a kid, uh, Little Caesars Fridays was a big deal. But this is when they had the, the brick style pizzas, but they would serve it in paper. That Little Caesars was like, no, we don't need a box. We're serving you pizzas in paper, and you rip the paper open. Yeah. It felt so good. Because you know what? Because they are tapping into nostalgia from Christmas, opening gifts, oh shredding paper. It's like a gift that you're getting on Pizza Fridays. You know who owns Little Caesars? Who? Santa. Oh, that makes so much sense. He's buying arenas. That's how he funds the North Pole. He's buying arenas. He's funding the... Well, you know the elves are they don't have health insurance. He's paying them out of pocket under the table. Well, they're also not humans. Yeah. So they don't need the same health care. Yeah, no, look, they should be grateful that they have employment. I think they're stoked to be slaves. To they, be honest. They should, yeah, look, I mean I haven't seen an elf uh in the last couple of months. I don't know what they do during the regular well, part of the year. But... I think that they've got tracking devices and chips in their neck. And yeah, right, right back. You know where that yeah, goes. You know. Yeah. Right there. From that one time. Yeah. From that one time. Yeah, exactly. And there's fences that mm -hmm. are set up around it you get that are enclosed. Close. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no. Yep. Wow. Wait a minute. Did you spend some time up? I, I speak elf. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. How many are actually during the Christmas season? Because I know... Obviously, he has the 12 reindeer, mm -hmm. but the reindeer, they all they do is fly. They don't make gifts. Yeah. So how many elves does he actually have working uh, at the sweatshop? <sighs> Not as many as you'd think, man. Really? It's a kind of a sad situation. Okay. They don't sleep a whole lot. No. Yeah. No. A lot of PTSD up, up in the North Pole. Oh, man. What do they say when they're upset about things? Oh, shivery, shivery feelings are all over my body. Oh, oh my I can't focus on making the the, yeah. the the presents for Santa. Oh, my gosh. And they're making Little Caesar's pizza at the same time. Ooh, pizza, pizza. <laughs> That's the little Roman guy was a fucking elf. Yeah. He's not Italian. It's No, no. He's an elf. He's an elf. Oh, those are elf ears. Those aren't. They're not Italian ears. There's not Italian ears. We have noses. We don't have ears. Yeah. Dude, this is a conspiracy that I wasn't ready to tackle. It's called Tripoli. Show. We got to talk about this. Yeah. Do you have an elf voice? I, do, I, I My voice has been uh, conditioned to sound like an angry stepdad. Okay. At this point, yeah. Like, I wake up in the morning, I'm like, don't! That's how I start. That's a pretty stern yeah. voice. I wake up in the morning and I, don't! Like, my right arm just goes up. Like the Don't Wake Daddy board game where you pop out of the bed and then you're immediately, don't? 
Please, please stop. <laughs> Don't eat that. You're going to break it. <laughs> the dog went to the bathroom again. Oh, not again. <laughs> Too many cats. All those things. Johnny's stepdad comes with 13 different sayings when you pull the string on the back of his body. The most common one saying, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> I love this toy. <laughs> Johnny's stepdad from the, Mattel. The look on my face is always like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. God damn it! And the and the 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 pose only goes from here to yeah. <laughs> and this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The old bull from Night Court <laughs> with four different poses. <laughs> Let's see what else would do. There's this one. There's this one. There's, the hands on the hip, maybe. Yeah, the with the the back. Yeah, the almost like the backward style. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. And the last one is, I don't know. That's my answer because you know they you pull the string and has to have one answer for the wife. Yeah. We missed the anniversary again. Arr. I forgot your kids' names again. <laughs> New from Mattel, Johnny's stepdad. Man, that I I'd buy that. I'd be into it. Little Caesar's elves. I'm telling you what. Yeah, dude. The things that we find out when we really go deep. You know, that's what this podcast is honestly about, is going deep. Going deep. It's all about going... With Jeremiah Watkins. Going deep. As he plays the piano and the condor pterodactyl, Jeremiah Watkins, preps for his match. Let's take the cameras backstage. As Jeremiah realizes he is the biggest fight of his life coming up as the condor pterodactyl Jeremiah Watkins will be facing the tractor library Razel Jenkins before we go to Razel in the locker room let's go to Jeremiah Jeremiah you're tracing the you're facing the tractor library Razel Jenkins in a matter of moments as you prepare for the biggest match of your life, Razel Jenkins weighs in at 395 pounds, 6 foot 13 inches tall. How do you feel? I feel some type of way. What way do you feel? I feel like breaking bones. Your bones are his. Definitely not mine. And how you gonna do that? Cause he weighs 395. I'm gonna corner him in the ring. I'm gonna make him sing for help at the top of his lungs. Or well, how you gonna make him sing? I'm when gonna punch his dingling. When you punch his dingling, I'm gonna punch his dingling. We're gonna punch his ding a ling. 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 Is that against the rules? I don't really know if that's against the rules. It's definitely against the rules. Oh, I looks like some kind of fool. Cause that was my only objective to punch his ding a ling. And make that grown man sing And then when he sings He's gonna fall down You're gonna grab his belly And then he's gonna go face down Face down in my brown I'm gonna make him eat my butt I'm gonna make him eat my butt I'm gonna make him eat my butt Taking him to brown town Every way down Take to brown town <laughs> Brutus Beefcake Just 
like Brutus Beefcake. And then you lock in the sleep hole. After and you lock him in the sleep hole. After punching his dingling. After punching his dingling. After he slipped on the vomit. This was a very eventful match. Now you got him in the sleep hole. Cause you punched him in his dingly. I punched him in the dingly. Punched him in his dingly. Punched him in the dingly. Square. In the dingly. Is your nose running? Take a bite out of summer with HelloFresh. From chef-crafted seasonal recipes to their new fresh fit, summer menu, HelloFresh brings flavor right to your door. Pre-portioned ingredients help cut down on food waste, while step-by-step -step instructions make cooking a breeze, not a chore. I hate when cooking's a chore. Look, to, look, are you looking? I'm looking. Are you looking to eat well this summer? Yeah, yeah. HelloFresh's menu features calorie smart and protein smart lunch and dinner options plus new vegan dinners to choose from hello fresh makes it easy to reach your food goals with flavorful recipes that leave you feeling satisfied i love hello fresh because it saves me a lot of time and i feel like some kind of like sous chef at a restaurant or like some kind of like like uh, that gordon ramsay guy like like inspecting like the food like looking at it like if it tastes good or what but, but like you make it yourself and you you feel like a gourmet chef in the luxury of your own home and it's real cheap and stuff like that compared to going out to a restaurant go to hellofresh.com slash wonders 50 and use code wonders 50 for 50 percent off plus free shipping that's hellofresh.com slash wonders 50 and use code wonders 50 for 50 percent off plus free shipping hellofresh America's number one meal kit. I got emotional, man. You know, I, I my sinuses are. Um, mm. <laughs> wow, do we just fulfill it? A childhood dream. <clears throat> it's almost like I, I, uh, I blacked out over the past five minutes. Um, were we in the bowels of the Staples Center? I was watching an epic wrestling match. That's where I was in my head. That's all I remember. Yeah, I remember a pterodactyl, a pterodactyl boy that was fulfilling a dream. It was a special moment. I'm honored. I'm honored to be. I'm honored to be a part of it. You know. It, yeah. It. <laughs> sometimes in life, you just you don't know. You don't know what's gonna what you're going to be a part of and then no you're dealt a certain hand and then you decide what to do with that hand from there right it's like a it's like a poker game you know now you have you have a couple kids um yeah when was the last time you were punched in the ding -a uh well i i've requested it a number of times but it hasn't actually happened yet yeah oh, okay i like to punish myself oh I, that's your father's day gift yeah I self I self punch. Yeah. I start off the morning, dingling punch. God damn it! That's uh, to me. That's my affirmation. Mm -hmm. I don't know about what do you do as a father in the morning. 
um, I played tiger with my son this morning for a little bit. Were you the tiger or were you both tigers? Great question. Yeah. Because sometimes it's just me that's the tiger, but then other times we're both tigers. Okay. This morning, I was a tiger. I think he was an elephant. And did you uh, did you fight? What was the? Cause that's a, that's an interesting battle there. Yeah, I definitely had a couple takedowns. He okay. had a couple takedowns on me. Points. Yeah. Points. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I did some snarling. You should. Yeah. He and as I'm an elephant, I imagine he probably used his trunk. Oh yeah, he can't quite make the noise yet, so he just goes. That's good for me. He identifies as an elephant, but I'm like, this is what... Look, let's not get into that. Okay, I don't think we have enough time. All right, when it comes to... Kids elef- identifying as elephants. Look, hey, let your son live his life, okay? Hey, that's what I'm trying to let him just, do. Just, I'm just trying to have him sound more like an elephant. Let me just say this. No elephants in my house. All I'm saying. What? None. Okay. All right. Do you see it? Have you seen how many people they have stomped? Just for fun. You see how many people... I've been on the Jungle Cruise at Disney. They squirt out of their, their trunks. They get people wet. Yeah. Rude. Elephants are squirters. Very... Well, yeah. I mean, probably the best squirters in the animal kingdom, if you think about it. Probably. Some would say snakes, but I think elephants have a little bit more. Really? Some would say snakes? Some would. Who would say that snakes are better squirters than elephants? Uh, well, the family of snakes. Uh, Hyping up their own snakes. stuff? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, snakes. I mean, especially the venom. They squirt the venom. Which snake are we talking about? Uh, the uh, Algonquin cobra, I believe. What? How do you say that? Algonquin cobra. Algonquin cobra. Have you ever seen? They Com- open. Comment below. Algonquin cobra. They open if the you mouth. Can spell it. Mm-hmm. Is that what the dinosaur? In Jurassic Park was based off of is the Algonquin Cobra. Is it an obvious? Open your eyes. There's a lot of things. That I, there's a lot of things you. I, I feel like you haven't wanted to look deep, but you need to. Okay, I didn't know that this was going to be a look into it kind of podcast. Yeah, but I guess today is. Well, look, when you bring me on, it's going to go deep. Okay. So we're yeah. in the deep end. Yeah, really deep. We're there. Brother. We're in the seven foot end. Yeah. Of the community swimming pool right now. Oh yeah. And guess what? We're barely keeping afloat right That's now. That's right. Our floaties are deflated. We're about to deep dive. Mm-hmm. We're going to get the rings at the bottom of the pool. Mm-hmm. Are we going to come up? Only Nobody God knows. knows. Yeah. Let's get into this next segment. It's called Wig. Wig. Winifred. <sighs> How are you liking your sweet tea, baby? Annabelle, I'll tell you what. I would have thought that with every single ship I had flown up to heaven, touched an angel's ass, and flown right back next to you. Thank you. I made it myself. I could tell you did. A lot of love in there. A lot of love. A lot of love. There might be a few more things in there, too. I I might have put a little something-something in there. Well, I I tell you, we always put a little something-something in your drinks. I like that. Oh, really? I do so much. I mean, Annabelle, the amount of care you put into your sweet tea, people just don't appreciate it enough. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to be sitting here with you. Winifred, I know you are a man of the law. You're running for re-election, but... Mm -hmm. How are things at home? Well, um, as you know, uh, the investigation is ongoing. Um, my dearly departed, uh, Clarabelle, who you knew well. Oh, I knew her well. Uh, mm-hmm. un- unfortunately, she left this earth uh, prematurely. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I... That's not something that you share in common with her, is prematurely departing now is it no much like well, your unfortunately your hat just my hat did. just prematurely did. departed well it's windy the, the, the wind goes. it is windy on this porch yeah sometimes i feel like maybe it's clarabelle just saying hi you know just floating on by it could have been i don't know but you know i i told the police that clarabelle passed away of natural causes and for some reason they 
I guess it's due diligence, as you say. <clears throat> See, it gets me. <clears throat> it gets Was me that Clarabell inside your throat just a second ago? I think it may have been. You know what they call it? Uh, in other cultures, they call it a jenny. What's that? A jenny. It's kind of like a spirit. Mm-hmm. You come in in the, in the guts, in the innards, mm-hmm. and spirit come up out through you. Mm-hmm. And it just makes itself known. That's what happened in my throat just now. Jenny. They call it a gin. They call it a gin. A gin. Not the gin that, that's in their sweet tea. It's a jenny. A gin. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. A due diligence, I guess. They they, they say they want to investigate, um, you know, the uh, the bump in the back of Clarabelle's head. I, I said, okay, you, you could investigate that if you want. I just, I don't know. I'll, do I'll, they sense foul play? What do they sense? I mean, I, I don't know what they sense. I Personally, for me, I, I think any kind of play is usually a good thing. Play is mm. fun for people. What kind of play would you like to do with me today on the porch? Hmm? Oh, well, I mean, Annabelle, I think uh, I have another sweet tea. I think I'm going to be open to any other kind of play that you're talking about. You better behave over there. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm a man of the law, as you say. Yeah, you better cross those legs twice so I don't see anything poking up in between those well, legs. Well, I'll do the left over the right. How about that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as but don't worry. Any kind of play we get involved in, look, I have protection. So oh, okay. wha- oh, wow. You are caring. Okay. Yes. Well, of course, you know I'm caring. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, you never know who's out to get you. Like I said, I believe there might be a few people in this police force who don't appreciate my views. And so, therefore, they are trying to get me. Well, let's get into your views, okay? What is your platform exactly? Because I need to know if, you know, me as one of the pillars of this community, you if I are, can endorse you properly. You are not just a pillar. You are a concrete, cement, porcelain. Diamond, mm. glass, mm. plastic, mm. just any other kind of material that just makes something stand sturdy. Mm-hmm. Annabelle is Annabelle, right? Yeah. Annabelle, yes. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I get you You've mixed. known me for 25 years. Well, Why are you asking me my name like that? Well, like it just flew out the window. Well, huh? no, because sometimes I feel like you are so perfect. I'm like, she can't be a human being. I see you biting on that glove. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well. That's what I could maybe be doing for you later if you say the right things. I think I'm going to put my piece down while the other piece goes up. Mm Mm-hmm. Now you want to hold on to your other nine millimeter, huh? (laughs) It's five and a half millimeter. Anyways. um, Oh. Did the wind just? Yeah, Clarabelle. I, th- I think Clarabelle, Clarabelle. I think Clarabelle is haunting this dang porch. Clarabelle, it's nap time, honey. Okay. Me and Annabelle are having a adult conversation. Okay. Let's see if that hat wants to stay on. Mm. I have a hat too. You do. My Jimmy hat. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I have a couple of. Them. Okay. I have a, I have a couple in my wallet. I got a couple in my glove box. Uh, I got one in my center console. Are you talking about condoms? Oh. Well, yeah, my Jimmy hats. Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. Are you trying to tell me you you prefer You won't need those. Oh, okay. Okay. I like being, yeah. I like being blasted inside of Okay, well, it's okay. I got my tubes tied. It's all right. You got your tubes tied, too? I did. I did, yeah. So we can just... Yeah. We can just go Monday Night Raw in there, huh? We could. We can go live on USA Network at 9 p.m. Monday Night Raw. Just, Come down and smack it down. Well, look, uh, I am at your behest, like I said in the beginning of our talk. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you can you tell me some key points of your campaign, of how you're going to clean up some of the problems downtown? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I, I will tell you one thing. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, this town has way too many noodles everywhere you go. Way too many noodles. And I'm tired of it. People are slipping and sliding on these noodles because there are way too many noodles. These restaurants are throwing them out on the street. They're throwing them out of their house. They're throwing them out of their window. There's noodles everywhere in this town. And I'm not going to let ri- liver... Uh, ri- I can't even say the name of the county. I'm so worked up about it. All right? You know we live... Riverton. Yeah, Riverton. Mm-hmm. Riverton County. Ca- I'm not going to let Riverton County be overcome by these noodles. Too many noodles. That's mm. number one. Okay. Yeah. I guess... We have had a problem with them at some of the restaurants and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, you are the president of the uh, the restaurant association, so it is something I have to discuss I, with you. I, I mean, I didn't know that it had gotten that out of hand. I've slipped on a couple noodles, but I mean, that's mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. But I didn't realize that it was overtaking it. I mean, you slipped on a couple noodles. Yeah. What were their names? I didn't name them. Oh, okay. Right. You Do you typically name your noodles? Well, yeah, you have to know. If you're getting rid of some noodles, you have to let them know. So I, I tend to make sure I'm very specific with them. Do you like your noodles hard or soft? Because mm. they come two different ways. In the box, they come very hard. Mm. And if you boil them, they get a little slippery, slimy, and sticky. Well, as I've gotten older, I've become more accustomed to soft noodles. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's easier on my colon. Bless your heart. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you're a hard noodle person. All the way. Really? Sometimes I just take them straight out of the box, uh-huh. and I'm like a circus act. I just... Oh, wow. You do like a sword swallow? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. my throat has elongated through evolution and over time. Oh. So um, there isn't a curvature in my throat like a lot of other people. So I just shove things straight down. Oh, so you could also do the the, the fire uh, the fire gimmick? Oh, you put easily. The, oh, wow. Easily. Wait, do you do that in the restaurants? Because I know that back by the grill, you know, mm-hmm. you can light stuff on fire and just boom, right down the old gullet. Yeah, sometimes. Wow. If I'm in the mood. And up bell. Mm-hmm. The things we learn about each other. I know. The things we do for love. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't tell me about it. I mean, Clarabelle knows what I've done for love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't know anymore. Um, do you hear the cricket? We have a dang cricket problem on this porch. Wow. And it's broad daylight, which is dang frustrating right now that he's trying to mate. That's you another... know that sex noise, right? Yeah, I know it is. That's They're... another problem. Noodles yeah. and the crickets. Because well, yeah. these crickets are now middle of the day. Middle of the day, having no good goddamn respect for everybody else, just whopping it out. They used to be fine at night. I yeah. let them have their night time. But right. when they come to the day and disrespect me. Yeah, that's right. They're nocturnal. That's fine. That's fine. You know but what this stay means? that way. You know what this means? What does that mean? They're on the myth. That's why they're awake. What does that mean? The crickets are taking the meth. They're awake. They're whopping all day. Those are meth crickets? Yeah, I think so. That's why they're all hopped up doing the sex noises right now in broad daylight? Mm-hmm, because they don't know what day is. They don't know which way is up. They don't know their ass sideways from the hole in the goddamn ground. They're just I mean, going at it. And to be fair, I don't know which way is their ass and which way is their eyes because every time they're jumping, it's a surprise. Well, I've looked I at didn't them. even mean to rhyme, but I just did right there. It's fair. It's very difficult. You are. I mean, I know you used to, you you have been uh, one to write poems in the past, and I do love all your poems. I celebrate your poetry. You do? You like my poetry? I celebrate them. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's well known. These meth crickets, it's impossible to know where one hole is, where one hole ends. All I know is we need to get rid of the noodles. That's what the men say about me. They do. Mm Mm-hmm. It's hard to know one hole from the other. Should we? Should we leave this porch, Annabelle? I'm thinking about it. Why are you wearing kitchen gloves? Those are uh, very heavy duty. What you mean? These are my these are my lady gloves. What you talking oh, about? They're lady gloves. Oh, I, I see. Clarabelle used to wear those when she was doing the palm olive in the kitchen. So that's why. What you mean? These are high class hmm. white gloves. Well, I know, I know you only wear white gloves, but yeah. they to me they look a little bit protective, as if you just hop on a motorcycle right now. Just no, right off. no, these no. are just for looking prim and proper on a good Sunday morning. You know, you are the truest. Oh, see, the cricket stopped whopping. Uh-huh. See, now yeah. they're sleeping. Now they're sleeping. You are the truest Southern Belle in all of Riverton. I appreciate you I saying I just want to let you know that. I appreciate that. And I hope I have your vote. I think you do. No noodles. No noodles. No, no crickets. crickets. And that's it. Is there a third one, or is that just it? Uh, I'm working on a third one. Okay. Yeah, just them two. Okay. So, now what? We just... Go inside and find those holes. Let's find them. <laughs> Wig! Oh, yeah. We've reached the final moment of this podcast with this segment that I like to call Sax Talk. Oh, Sax Talk. Now, you're going to share a story of a sexual encounter, and I'm going to play some sweet, sweet sax underneath it. And whenever you're ready, I'll play along. There's nothing I would rather do to close out this show than sax talk. 
Picture it. Irvine, California. Probably around the year 2008. I'm on stage at what used to be the Irvine Improv, and uh, a dame walked into this club. After my set, she came up to me and said, Hey. So I said, How you doing? She said, what we're going to do right now is we are going to get a hotel room. And we are going to have a good time. So right away, I'm thinking, got to play things safe. Didn't have any rubbers. Didn't have any jimmy hats. Didn't have any umbrellas. So we had to go to the nearest store that was open, which happened to be Target. Didn't realize how many options there were, so I found the simplest option. I picked up a three-pack. This woman looked at the three-pack, and she, without a flinch, said to me, Is three going to be enough for tonight? To which I gulped. And then I said, who else is coming over? Because I don't really need three. It's already midnight. And honey, I got heartburn. So we get to the hotel. Little did I know, her family owns the hotel. It's at this moment I look down at her hand and I see the tattoo of an engagement ring with thorns going through it. And I said, oh no, this young lady has been through some shit. So we get to the room and she gets aggressive. Not only does she get aggressive, she starts ordering me around, telling me what to do. And within 20 seconds of the deed after it had begun, she says to me, you're going to have to go faster than that, honey. To which I said, if I go any faster, this is going to be done in about 15 seconds. So in that moment, I faked a hamstring pull. That's right. I faked the hamstring pull. And I backed away. And I hobbled around. I ran, I ran to the bathroom. Is that Sports Center? <laughs> and I ran to the bathroom and I looked myself in the mirror. And I said, kid, you got to pull it together. You got to go faster. So I went back, and in that moment, she said, you know what? I'm not in the mood anymore. And I keep saying, hey, give me a second chance, you know? And that's when the phone rings. She picks up the phone. And I hear on the other line, her mother. Her mother says, it is 1.30 in the morning. Where are you? Don't you know that you are on parole? You cannot be out past midnight. And that's when she said, I gotta go. She grabbed her stuff and as she walked out the room, she turned back to me and said,
Hey, hun, don't worry. The hotel's on me, because my daddy owns the hotel. And then two weeks later, I get a charge for $110. And I thought about it for a second. Should I really reach back out to her and say, hey, I thought you said the hotel was free? But I didn't. Because quite frankly, this is the most terrifying woman I've ever met in my life. And I call that one the one that got away. <laughs> Go watch Johnny's new special, oh. Saudi Stepped at It's on YouTube. It's free. Yes. We go way back. We if do. I can find it, we did a sketch like 10 years ago. At least 10 years ago. At least 10 years ago. Wearing wigs. It was just called Suck It. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, just a fun sketch. I'll try to put at the end of this it's episode. not an appropriate sketch, it. full disclosure. Yeah, but you know. It's just a couple of kids having fun. Yeah. Let us have fun. But go watch Saudi Stepdad on yeah. YouTube now. Love you, brother. Thank you so much Love for Love you so much. Thank you. It's an honor, man. Thank you. So I went out with Kevin last night. No way! Yes, way. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, come on, you slut. You shut up! No, you shut up! <laughs> Maybe I will. Okay? Okay. He, he told me to suck it. He told you to suck it. He told me to suck it. He told you to suck it. He told me to suck it. He told you to suck it? Suck it. He told you, Autobots, suck it. Autobots, assemble, roll out, bumblebee, Jax, let's go, suck it. He told you to suck it. He told me to suck it. He told you to suck it. He told me to suck it. He told you to suck it. He told him to suck it. He told you. So did you suck it? Yeah. Yeah, you did, you squat. <laughs> Shut up. No, you. Okay, fine. <laughs> that dude's tasty. No calories.